So today we are going to have a look at Word Linux. It's something different but amazing at the same time. So it's not a fork from any other Linux distribution. It's independent. It's having its own init system called Runit. It's having its own package manager called X binary package system. And at the same time, it's maintaining Linux distribution with same glibc and musclelibc. So if you go to the download section, you can see like you have options for live image with glibc and live image with the muscle option. So according to your use case, you can choose whichever you want. You have a few desktop environment options if you want to choose. So for my case, I'm just going to choose this XFC one with the muscle libc. So without wasting much of our time, let's begin installing this. So this is actually a boot up, like uh, this is actually a booted up live environment for Fort Linux. So this is XFCE. So you can see over here. So this is what you get. So you don't have a Calamaris installer or something. So I'm going to full screen by hitting F11. So the way you install Word Linux is using your terminal. So you have multiple options in performing the installation. You can do like a rootfs method or you can use the installer. So here we are going to use the Word installer. So for that you have to do is sudo void dash installer. So if you do that, it will give you this menu. So this is similar to make menu config in Linux kernel configuration. So here you set your keyboard layout. If you hit your like, if you hit the key over here, it will go to like, you can choose it from here. So if I hit U, it will go to U, something like that. Now here you can configure your network. So you can use either DHCP or static ID. It's according to your use case. So if you get network is working properly, everything is fine. Then source, you can do a network based install or you can do a local install. So if you have downloaded an image like me, you can do a local install. Then we have to set our host name. And we can pick our time zone. So Asia, so if I hit K again, it's going to give me here. So Kolkata for my time zone, set the root password. we can create a new user so for this case i'm just going to name the user null you can give like any username which you like here you specify your password and this is the part where you specify groups for your newly created user so you have to be careful over here so if the user is not part of wheel group you won't be able to access uh, things like uh, sudo or something though the actions which require super user privileges so the user should be the part of wheel group in order for you to use those actions i don't need floppy i don't think anybody uses floppy anymore mm, this is a virtual machine i don't need okay let's leave it there in case if i need to do something network okay so that's pretty much it i'm just going to click okay then I'm going to specify the bootloader to this device. Yes, use the graphical bootloader. Now I have to partition the disk, so I have this. So I'm go going to use CF disk. So it's giving you like uh, this. So for BIOS, you can use MBR or GPT. For uh, EFI, you have to use GPT only. And it's telling you how you can partition your system, like what are the labels which you need to provide. So if you want, you can read through that or if you want, you can follow along. So for me, I'm just going to do this on a, a UEFI machine. So this is a virtual machine with UEFI. So here I'm going to create a 500 megabyte partition for a grub or our bootloader. Then I have to change the type to EFI. Then 
here we are going to hit new and we are just going to create one partition for the root drive we are not going to create anything like swap or something now after you have done your changes you can hit write and you have to type yes that is yes in order for this changes to take effect then you can quit so that is done now you can work with your file systems here you choose like uh, which file system you want so for UFI you have to choose uh, ext4 no I'm sorry for boot uh, uh, you have to choose fat32 and the mount point will be slash boot slash EFI yes and the second one will be ext4 or if you want butterfs you can choose that so it will be a slash for the mount point to specify which is our root partition so that's done so if you need to create other volumes you can do that like uh, you can create home partition or something like that if you want you can do that so now like pretty much our configuration is complete so if we hit install it's going to start the installation process so it will give you a warning like uh, it's going to perform the like it's going to perform wipe on your file system so all your data will be lost so it's going to ask you like whether you want to do it or not so I'm going to hit Y. So if you haven't, in case if you haven't backed up anything in that file system or the drive, it might get erased. So just be careful with that. So this is going to take some time. So I'll be back when the installation process have been completed. So the installation process have been completed successfully. So it's asking you whether you want to reboot the system. So you can hit Y if you want to reboot or if you want to play around with the live system, you can hit no and exit so the system have been rebooted by default the xfce version of uh, muscle void linux is using lxdm as display manager and if you look over here you don't have like pretty much anything else apart from the default xfce apps so without wasting much of our time let's open up our terminal let me switch to full screen mode I hope you can read this so if I do df dash h you can see currently it's using somewhere around 2.3 gigabytes of disk space with few packages installed by me it was like 1.8 gigabytes by default so it's like relatively small and if I do a free dash h you can see the RAM usage is 266 megabytes then if I do a uname dash r it's currently running 5.10 but uh, if I update I'm going to get the latest release of the kernel so that's not a problem at all so what is using like a different init system called running so if you want to know the status of some process all you have to do is sudo sv and status followed by the process name so for example we can use dhcpcd and you have to enter your passphrase okay I have to enter it again so you can see it's running and you can see the process identifier and the time now if I want to like uh, restart it all I have to do is uh, sudo sv restart followed by the process name so it will restart the process so it will tell you like okay it's running and if you need to kill the process you do a sudo sv down and followed by the process name so now if you check for the status you can see it's not currently running so it's down so if you need to turn it back on all you need to do is sudo sv status up and dhcpcd or the service name so this will like put it back to the default state
So that is how you manage run it in Word Linux. Then let us take a look at how we can install packages in Word Linux. So Word is using a different package manager called XPPS. So the main difference with XPPS from all the other package management systems is every component of the package manager is independent. So XPPS dash install is one single binary then XPPS dash remove is another binary. So if you do like XPPS tab nothing is going to work out. So if you need to use like install something you do XPPS install and the package name. So if you do a dash s it is going to synchronize and it will get like it will give you the latest repositories and it will give you the latest package which you are going to install. So if you I do like sudo xpps install um, emacs or something it is going to update the repositories first then it is going to grab the latest uh, version of emacs for us. So it is going to tell us like how much size to download and all these things so I am going to hit no. So if you need to do like uh, a yes all you have to do is sy emacs so it will synchronize and it will install emacs without asking your permission like it will not ask you like this it will just install regardless so if I do something like that it is going to synchronize the repositories and it is starting to download the pro like the package automatically by itself so I am going to hit control c so I am having a resolve failure so how do you fix that so do slash h like uh, vi slash hc resolve dot conf so I do have the correct name server so not sure what is going on so if I do it again can see it is like doing something. Control C to exit out of that. I am not going to install Emacs on this anyway. So if you need to remove something like I have installed Vim for an example. So if you need to remove something you do remove and you can specify the package name. So if you remove like this you will just remove Vim it will not remove the dependencies for Vim. So like if you do a dash dash h for the xpps dash remove or dash install you are going to get this information like these are the flags you can pass with the options you can pass with the, the package management system. So if you do a dash o it will going it will remove the orphans. So if you need to remove something you can do like uh, if you need to remove recursively dash capital R, if you need verbose you can do dash V, if you need like no confirmation hit Y and you can see the version capital V dash F for like force. So if you need to clean shash like uh, equivalent of sudo pacman dash SCC you can do a dash O capital O something like that. So if you need to remove like orphans you just do a dash o it will remove the orphan packages if you have any orphan packages in your system. So that is how you pretty much install and remove packages with the xvps. But this may not be comfortable for uh, all users so let me minimize and if I open up like let me I will put a link in the description where you can go to this github page where uh, someone is already having a front end wrapper for void Linux. So this is this is like a front end wrapper for uh, uh, the xpps package management system. So I am having some issues with my network not sure what is going on. I'm pretty sure I'm correctly like connected to the internet. So probably maybe because of 
our restart with our DHCP CD. We are just going to restart it again. Let's try one more time. So I don't think it's going to work. We are going to restart Network Manager. So it's restarted. I think that's going to fix our network issues. Hopefully. Okay, leave it regardless. So you can go to this GitHub repository. So currently it's not available because of network, but I, al I have already installed the package for. So from there you just clone the GitHub repository like uh, you do a git clone. Uh, let me show you. Like, so if you do a git clone and uh, you use this repository, you are going to have uh, this VPM available. So VPM is like a front end manager for XVPS package system. So after you cloning that, first you need to install git. So sudo xpps dash install and can do dash s and git. If you need like if you don't need confirmation you can hit y or you can do like dash s and install and then confirm according to your use case so you clone this like you install git you clone the repository and if i do an ls i have this directory called vpm so if i cd into vpm and if i do an ls i have this package called vpm so what we are going to do is sudo cp vpm to slash uh, user local and bin so if you add this package to our local bin we are going to have access to this package wherever we are in the terminal we don't need to navigate to this directory either you can export the path or you can copy it to your bin according to your use case so after we do that we can go back to a home directory so if we do a vpm it's going to give you options how to use vpm that is void package management utility for xpps so it's like a wrapper for xpps so you have options to synchronize your repository so you can do an sy so vpm dash sy will synchronize so vpm dash up will update you can list repositories with lr repo list with rl so the most interesting part with void is you have options to enable like usually it comes with uh, only free packages so if you need to enable the non-free packages you have options to enable the repos so you can go to this list repo like repo list and you can enable the non fill repos if you want then you have like options like auto remove and all these things so you can go through this so if you need to use vpm you do a vpm up if you do a, an update or just up it's going to work it will synchronize and it will update your system regardless so that's how you pretty much manage void linux so if you need to install packages you can use either xvps install or uh, you can use vpm according to your preferences so void is like pretty strong pretty stable it's using a different init system it's a rolling release and it's actually quite different from something i have seen so it's having like uh, Two different C libraries available according to the user you can choose either muscle or glibc and you have so many options and it's also having an something like a ur like xpps that dash src where you can like compile packages or cross compile packages according to your use case so it's a wonderful distribution stable once you install it, you don't need to reinstall it again unless you 
make something wrong or uh, it breaks on you. It's a rolling release. Like from my use, I have used this in a virtual machine like uh, for quite some time. Not with this installation before this, even before this, I have used this for quite some time. So from my experience, it's strong and stable. So that's pretty much it about Word Linux. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope this one was helpful.